I think at the, core, in, at the core of what I was asked about how do we remain competitive is this question of the customer. It's this question of, um, well, is there a bit of a unique secret about you know, an international customer as compared to a, a customer in the Australian marketplace? Now look, I've thought long and hard about this, especially given that one of my board members is, is sitting in the audience, because I thought I could tell you that there's a secret, because that might cause me to be able to ask for a bit more money at the next salary review, but he would know, and we all should know, that there is not. And that I think that sometimes this is overblown. Every person in this room is a customer. And every person in this room looks for the same things when they turn up at their local supermarket. Now, whether you're a customer that's going to a supermarket to, to do a little bit of re retail shopping, buy the groceries, or whether you're, you're a customer because you're a business-to-business -business customer, in other words, we're selling to you for you to do something more with it, the rules actually don't change that much. And this is why I always go, you know, let's not get too complicated about what the rules of business are. So in, in, terms, of, in terms of the customer, well, what do they want? Well, the first thing they want to do, they put it on their shopping list, so when they turn up, they want to make sure the product's there, so they want reliability of supply. So we can tick the box and say, I think, you know, Australia's very good at reliability of supply in terms of agriculture. And then, you know, when you buy your block of burger cheese, you, you're actually taking it as, as red, that it will taste pretty much the same as the last block you bought. So they want consistency of supply as well. And then you move down and you say, well, you know, you would assume that if you've got reliability and consistency that quality is, of course, taken for granted. But it is important to make sure that that, that quality aspect is always there. You want it to be fit for purpose. If we said it would melt on, on the top of a pizza, you want it to melt. If we said that we're delivering an infant formula base to be further value added before it goes into a, into a retail market, you expect it to be able to be managed in the way it wants. So fit for purpose is extraordinarily important. But then we start to move into some of the more ethereal things, if you like. You know, a customer, no matter where they are, will ultimately become concerned about your behaviour, where you're sourcing your raw material, indeed how you're managing that supply chain and how you're delivering it, and they will start to ask those questions which we must be ready to answer. On top of that, increasingly there are, there is the growing story of providence. People want to talk about it in many different ways, but the reality is if we just go straight in, in a very simple way, and talk about it that talk about the fact that people want to feel good about their purchase. So when they're buying vegan cheese, somewhere they're reflecting on the ad that the vegan farmers did, talking about their love of the company and the product and their pride of the, on, in their properties and whatever else. And the providence thing starts to play. And that providence issue goes well beyond the consumer. It goes right through the supply chain. But interestingly, we are all human beings, and regardless of whether we're a direct consumer or indeed a business-to-business business business consumer, we will become bored. And we will expect innovation. We'll expect you to put it in a newer packet or do it in a different way or deliver a different product to find a way to value add. And if that's not coming, if that's not forthcoming, we'll expect the next thing, which is we want it cheaper. So we want cost out, we want, we want the supply chain to have become more effective. So the funny thing is that when you run through that list, it's not a very hard list to come up with. Any one of you, if you sat down for a moment and thought about it, you would say, yeah, okay, that's sort of what I want. Well, you, I don't think the assumption should ever be made that a customer anywhere in the world <coughs> is different to the customer sitting across the table from you. They are the same. You need to be culturally aware, you need to be designing your product to meet their needs, but in the end, they are the customer. And they get to ask whatever question they like, and you get to try and deliver to their expectation and requirement. If there is no innovation, if there is no improvement, if there is no research and development, you won't get there. 
you won't get there. You might hold them for a while and leave. So, so the reality is long-term customers expect you to be thinking about them continually. If I was to make a, if I was to, if I was to pick a customer in Australia, for example, and was to talk about Coles, Coles expect us to be thinking about the supply chain all the time. They don't expect to come in and not see us investing in faster and faster machines, greater and greater innovation. So it's not only about innovation in terms of the delivery <coughs> of the product, it is how that product is delivered. So ladies and gentlemen, I guess in, in this context, we think about, well, how does Australian agriculture take its position in the world? And indeed, what is the challenge for the leaders? Um, and it's interesting, I did say to, to my PA, uh, so how does Dr Evil get on the slide as a, as a global leader? And I did ask her the same question about myself. She thought long and hard about where she positioned the pictures on the slide and she did position me away from Dr Evil, although at the time she was just going to position me right beside him. But, um, but, but the reality is that it doesn't matter who the leader is. Dr Evil needed some of the same things that we need. I've got our esteemed political leaders up there because quite frankly there's been a number of comments, com comments made lately about the state of the Labor Party and the state of the politics in general, of politics in general. See, the funny thing is about leaders when you, when you come down to it, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe come back to the top one because that is perhaps more political than the rest. But, if you're a leader, if you're a leader of any salt, if you're a leader of any substance that's talking about taking a business forward, achieving something a little different, what are you really thinking about? Well, the first thing you should be thinking about is what infrastructure do I, decide, do I need, short and long term, to meet the objectives of this business? And whether that infrastructure's the infrastructure that bigger cheese requires, or indeed the infrastructure the nation requires to deliver product to the world, um, we better be thinking about it, and I don't think we are. That from a, from a national point of view. In terms of research and development, we would all say any good leader worth its salt will make sure that his business is focused on research and development, investment of the future to make sure that business can differentiate itself uh, in the marketplace, whichever marketplace it might be, work, might, might be related to. We would say that the working environment is extraordinarily important and what do we really need in that working environment? Well, we need people that are flexible. We need them to be motivated and we need them to be able to respond to changing conditions uh, according to, to what might be happening at the customer end. So you know, that's the marketplace, that's, that's, the, that's the environment that I would look to be creating for my staff and it would be the environment that I would hope my leaders would be looking to create in the country. And of course, we'd be making some in-market investment. We'd be making sure that we are indeed investing in the future, establishing reputational things that are important, making sure that our customers understand that we want to be there and we'll be there for the long term. And of course, we'd be staying the course. Barack Obama made a comment when he was uh, being asked about the origins, or when he was being asked to present his birth certificate because the nutty right were trying to say that he wasn't an American citizen. And he said, we haven't got time for this silliness. It was said again, interestingly enough, over the last few months while we've had the Labor Party wrangles around leadership and the, the wrangles around any number of other things where we see a distracted government that is not focusing on the things that any other leader would be expected to absolutely focus on. If you were a leader in corporate Australia, you would be asked to move to one side because you're, being, you're allowing yourself to be distracted. For me, these are the things that we should be thinking about. The top one around trade is, of course, about multilateral and bilateral trade agreements that see that custom be being able to be serviced more easily, or indeed us not a, not a disadvantage in competitive sense. But there is always an opportunity, I guess, to talk about what I think about and what I focus on, I guess, as I thought about it in this environment, and given the political atmosphere that we've lived in in recent times, I thought, actually, you know what, the leadership rules are not too different 
to the business rules. They actually stay pretty much the same, but you need people to be actually focused and thinking about them. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll be pleased to know this is my last slide. I open by saying we are in a very interesting period of time in that I think there is great opportunity for the Australian dairy industry to take a particular position in the global markets. It will be, it will be by necessity, a position that requires some level of premium, which is a little sobering because it wasn't Australia's traditional position. There is a lot of talk about food security globally now as we, as we look at population growth. And there's a lot of talk on occasions about whether Australia can actually add or indeed produce more food to assist with global food security. The truth is we all know that answer. We know the answer is yes, of course it can. The question that is going to be asked more often, I think, as we move forward, is not whether the demand's out there, not whether Australia can produce enough product, it will be whether the world can afford our food. And, and I think it's one that isn't actually asked often enough as we try and think about uh, how we build a sustainable and growing agricultural industry uh, in this country. There is one thing that we've learned over the last couple of years. It's been wonderful to see the last five years, I might say, it's been wonderful to see those demand curves going up and it's been wonderful to say we don't have a problem finding a customer. And in reality, it was great to see pricing before, pre the uh, global financial crisis just, just following through and pushing down on the farm and everybody um, enjoying the fruits of, of, of that. But of course, we learned a big lesson in the global financial crisis and that was that something completely external and unrelated to what we were doing could absolutely destroy the returns in our, in our business. And that's what it did. It was wonderful then to see it recover so quickly that you go, well, maybe we're going to return to, to pre-global financial crisis days. And of course, as I said, in pricing we have. But mining, two-speed economies have not seen that premium flow through. I've got a, a rather confronting slide up there the reason why I think there is some, there is great opportunity, but there is some doubt about how that opportunity might manifest itself and indeed how industries might play a role in it as opposed to companies, uh, is that there is great uncertainty out there. So while there is no question that as population growth grows and as GDP improves, you'll see domestic, you'll, you'll, you'll see demand improve but that population growth curve will also see that other statistic about how many people out there are dying of hunger go up as well. Why is that important for this forum? It is the problem of every nation, it is the problem of every industry that in the event of global stability, sorry, in the event of global instability, you will get extraordinary fluctuations in returns. I have a fundamental belief that the returns for food products will continue to improve and grow. There will be hiccups, and I accept that, and, 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 and that's evidenced. But the reality will be that those hiccups will be caused by external factors. Those hiccups will be used to, but caused by social unrest and political unrest as much as by economic upheaval. And it's something that, whilst not, not stopping any strategy that we have in business, it's something that we should always be aware of. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found that interesting. I'm pleased I've got a new watch and um, I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you.